Hello and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. This is Nick and today I am very happy to present a request by a viewer named Colin Marjoram. He tells me he's been working on a game with his friend named Tower of the Gorillion and I got the privilege to check it out and I'm incredibly impressed and I'm happy to bring this to you and show you what it's about. Now if you remember in the past I reviewed another sort of 8-bit, or rather, not 8-bit, but like 2-bit Game Boy style presentation uh, platform puzzler, and this one is another of that, but I think this one may be even better. Or at least the puzzles seem a little more clever and a little less frustrating. Alright, so there's the title screen. Shall we start this up? There we go. Alright, let us venture in to the tower. Now, when I first started this up, I didn't actually read the description underneath, so I felt kind of stupid, but I didn't get what was going on. So you actually have a, a foreground and a background in every part of this, and you get two characters, and you switch between them. Uh, simple premise, but very well executed, and very different, actually. And your goal, just get these two little guys to the exit of each screen. And there are some twists, as there always are. You actually get a couple of... Oh, that is not good jumping. You get a couple of screw-ups before the screen resets. Uh, as you can see, they're represented by those bubbles there. So, your guy in the front here, he's got a ladder to climb, a couple of spike pits to avoid. Nothing too scary or bad. Now, at first I was thinking the spike pit would kill both foreground and background, but no, this one in fact uh, does not harm the background specter dude, and I was looking for another way through and I was not getting that, I just needed to jump down right through there. And uh, You know, you'd think it would be very well evidenced by the fact that this tunnel goes right through everything, but I wasn't picking up on that. And there's some very strange sky giraffes hanging out up here, they seem pretty happy. I mean, look, they're making like a silly face when they come up. So let's bring our other friend down. We got a little bit of a jumping puzzle here, nothing too crazy. And you can actually play this in co-op, which I think would be really cool to do, actually. Almost got me. Uh, and some of the puzzles, I think, are a lot easier if you play co-op. But you know me, I tend to do these always by myself. Alright, so then we got some buttons here where we can actually interact with each other. Let's see if I remember how to do this. I don't think this first one's that hard, actually, but it, they get tricky pretty quick. I'm gonna see how far I get before I can get stuck, or I do get stuck. And it will happen. That last jump reminded me of some kind of a Mega Man jump trying to grab the ladder at the last second. So this is where we get our first little curveball here. Uh, had I read the description below the game, I would have known this, but the boxes actually are interactable in both the foreground and background. Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting way ahead of myself here, trying to jump before I'm even off the ladder. Alright, and then this one. I was going, look, uh, I pushed this box here, I'm still not going high enough. What's wrong with me? Am I doing this wrong? What's going on? thinking the solution was something much more complicated, but your dude underneath can actually just do that, switch characters, and finish the jump. Very creative solution, I like that one. We've got some more button action to go through here, and your uh, do-overs reset per screen. This one seems awfully easy, actually. Wow, that was a really stupid jump. As always, I love the music of this. Really jamming. Uh, I don't know where everybody's getting these really awesome soundtracks lately, but I, I hope it keeps up that way. Alright, so this guy's gonna need somewhere to jump off of. 
and the art is really well done too. I mean, it, it's super simple. It's like, like I said before, Game Boy style, but it's really well done. The animations are good. The controls feel spot on. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's not the game's fault. That's me being really stupid when I keep crossing that gap and not jumping. There we go. Better than this, people. Got some more sky giraffes to deal with. I like how the screen also splits like that when we get far enough apart. Check this out, when I go all the way over here, you can actually see both sides at the same time. So if you're playing this with another human, that would be quite valuable to be able to tell that. Alright, we gotta cross this with my one bubble left. Why am I jumping here? That is not where I need to jump. I need to actually open that up for him to go through. Make my way up these girders here. I like the backgrounds too, with the nice pretty starscape and the clouds moving around. Now this is a challenging ass puzzle, I have to say. Uh, I was not sure what the hell to do here. But, oops, okay. I gotta remember which ones are foreground and background. This one is definitely background. The second one that I just jumped to, that's foreground. So this guy can activate it. But once these blocks are here, both of us can step on them. Then this can happen. But now I'm up here. Now, I'm not sure if this is how you're supposed to solve this. Well, actually, no, I'm doing it backwards. Well, let me just show you. I can actually make this jump here. But that does not matter. Okay, let's just die and reset. Let's set him up there. Put this guy here. I'm gonna jump, switch characters, and then jump my other guy over. Ready? Just like that. Now this guy can go here. And... I think this guy jumps a little less far than the other one. I'm gonna try this anyway, though. Nope. Okay, fail. Let's do it again. Really good puzzle, though. This is, like, this is tricky to think of, tricky to execute, but very rewarding when you get it pulled off. Alright, so I'm gonna jump, switch, jump. Alright, got it. Now I can jump to this one. Now I gotta do it one more time. Jump, switch, jump. Perfect. Now I gotta do the whole process repeated, but reversed. Well, actually I don't, because I can jump this gap like I showed you before. So, on we go. Alright, this is where I left off before I started recording, so this is gonna be new material here. Let's see if I can beat this one. Doesn't look too crazy hard, but... Appearances can be deceiving. It looks like I'm just making path with these boxes. Um, does that make it harder? I don't understand. Am I able to jump on that? Yes. Okay. Well, this is not a hard screen then. That's fine. I like it that they mix up the difficulty a little bit, because if every stage after the one before it is always harder, that sometimes can get a little frustrating. It's nice to have a little quicker progression. And that's me forgetting again that I can only walk in the background, because sometimes I do that. Um, Alright, what do I do here? I gotta push this block down, then I should be able to jump up to that. Uh, then I can jump back up to here, push this block over here. Can I jump that high? No, I can't. Um, no, I don't think I need this at all. I can just push it down. I should be able to cross this gap. And then push this here. Is this even the right way? Yeah. It looked like you could go the other direction, too. If this had branching paths, that would be freaking awesome. Uh, not that I'm saying this isn't freaking awesome now, but I'm saying it as another added level of interestingness. Cool. Um, where am I going now? I gotta take a second to, like, assess the situation before I start jumping at everything. Which is probably the smart thing to do. Okay. So far, so good. Now we've got totally separate place ladders here, so I gotta make the best of that. Um, no, that's not right. 
Looks like I can just make my way up. And this guy should be able to cross that gap. And that gap. And this gap. And ladder. Oh man, we're starting off on totally separate ends now. So what do I have to deal with here? Oh, this screen keeps going. Alright, this is going to get really complicated if we're going off the screen as well. Oop. Oh, that sucked. That was just stupid damage. <laughs> I'm just saying that all the time now. Um, switch to switch, but I'm not sure what that affected yet. Let's just explore with this guy and see what happens. Gotta go up here. The music definitely is exciting, too. It like makes you want to keep going and see what's going on as you progress. Clearly a box I have to use for something. I'm confused. Jeez, oh, why would I do that? I should keep falling right off. There's so much, like, overlap with the uh, foreground and background, it's getting, like, a little bit complicated to tell what I can touch. This looks like the end goal. Uh, why would I need to push that box in there? He can definitely cross that gap. I don't know. Starting to get confused. Can't seem to touch that. Can I make the jump up there? No. Okay, I guess we're resetting on that one. I think this one's only difficult because it's a little bit overwhelming. There's like a lot going on here. Alright, so I can't... Oop, wow, I could stand on that edge until I hit the button. So I need to toggle that. That lets me go up. Now, if I toggle this back, it should let me go up here. I'm sort of just trying to follow it now as... Oh, stupid. I'm trying to just follow it as if it was like a step-by-step -step deal. Like, as the developer may have intended to play it. Still not sure what I need to do with this box, but it seems like the only right thing to do is to push it in there. Can't touch that box that's right up against that wall. Pretty sure I need to push the box in from the other side. And I can probably do this. I don't know if that's a useful thing to do or not, though. I hope it is. It probably is, yeah. How do I deal with this? It seems like I should be able to make that jump, but I can't. I'm feeling stumped now, but I'm not sure that I am actually stumped, I'm just feeling stumped, like I need to just keep messing around or something. But hopefully you've gotten the idea that this is a very engaging and well done, and still not quite finished game actually, this one's still under development, so I'm not sure quite how far this goes. Oh, right, I need a platform there to be able to jump onto. This box clearly has to do with it. Oh, I know what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to toggle this back so I could bring the box over so I could... Okay. I understand. Now, let's just do this. Do it properly. I don't want to leave everybody hanging. I'm going to get to the next screen, and then maybe we'll bring this video to a close. Um... Uh, jumps. Okay. Uh, probably didn't need that, actually. Oh, I can't toggle that again? I gotta do it like that. No. Don't screw me over here. Oh, man. Get... Ah, <laughs> uh, what have I done? I don't know why I care. Let's just do it that way. Alright, push. Now is this... Is this actually gonna work? It's not. I'm really confused.
Ah, now I get it. I thought I got it, I didn't get it. The difficulty curve on this game is, uh, seems like it's jumping up pretty quickly all of a sudden. Definitely makes you think. Is that box still... Damn it. I gotta, like, reset the whole screen by killing myself three times for this to actually go back. Okay, sorry YouTube, I'm taking way too long on this level. I know you're probably sick of watching it now. Alright. This needs to cross this gap. But I need to not push it into any gaps, into any holes yet. Uh, I need to go back. Toggle that. Go back. Push this up to this ledge. And now, only now, can I successfully bridge the gap. Oh. Okay, I still don't know what's up with this box. So I'm not gonna mess with it yet. Alright, what do I need to do over here, though? Can you just... Oh. Okay, maybe there's more sw Oh, crap. I have no idea where I am. Okay. I completely, like, lost my ability to discern foreground and background for a few moments. Ah, oh, shit, what do I do now? I can't make that jump, though. I need something to guide me through it. How am I even supposed to get back up? Okay, I guess that's how. Ah, okay, I win. I figured it out. I knew I needed to leave that alone. Alright, I think we got it now. As long as I don't forget about the foreground and background again. Screw you, giraffe. I'm out. Hooray! Oh man, it's the gorilla. I'm terrified. <laughs> Did I win? I did. What is a gorillion anyway? <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you for watching another episode of Indie Impressions. Tower of the Gorillion was a lot of fun, even though I unintentionally just let's played the whole thing. Uh, I very much look forward to see what kind of even more challenging puzzles await us in the future. And I'm sorry that last puzzle took me that long. It was complicated, I mean, to be fair, but still, I, I was not thinking correctly to get through that. So make sure you head on over to facebook.com slash indie impressions. I post every night's video there, and you can leave comments, and we can have our discussions and such. And please, leave a comment on the video. I want to know what you guys think about these games. Uh, the discussion on the YouTube channel itself has been a bit on the low side. I mean, you guys can do what you want, but it's cool when I get comments from you. I really appreciate that. Uh, I think that will draw this episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be back again tomorrow with another one. Say goodbye, Sky Giraffes. Bye-bye! <laughs>